HomeKit compatible garage door openers. I know we talked about them on the show here. Yep. I I those are freaking amazing. Um, I put one of those. They they have a couple of different versions. Make sure I'll link to the right one, but um, put the uh, make, you get the one that's HomeKit compatible, and. They make one that is a one garage door unit, and then they make another one that is a three garage door unit. Based on your feedback, most people say the three garage door one it gets a little janky. It um, it will expose three doors, whether or not you have three connected. So if you buy the three and you only have two, it will it will expose a third door to home kit that people say they can't really hide. You could unfavorite it, I suppose. Uh, but just be aware of that. But um, yeah, the Moross thing works great. I've got that on on Lisa's garage, and it's been absolutely fantastic. So and rock solid. So do do that. It's cool. You don't. It works with your existing garage door opener. You don't have to replace anything. Um, it just plugs in. It's actually got two leads that plug into terminals on your head unit for your garage door. And then it just like it no and you know it just triggers a open or close so yeah it, yeah 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 it and Very it was cool. like forty bucks or something so that was Pete is trying to talk but actually I think Pete is talking but Pete has muted himself and so yeah well I was but you know <laughs> you know there you so, go it's like you know, maybe you could set up to open a neighbor's garage door with that third <laughs> door or... <laughs> well I I think it they all have to be in the same they have like, to be go, in the same Wi Fi. They have to be in the same garage, I, like like at my house. You know, oh, I've got yeah, yeah, two yeah. in one building and one in another. I don't think the three pack would work for me because you've got to be able to wire them all into the same head unit. So, gotcha. yeah, 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 yeah. But that's not the uh, you had you had uh, prepped a, a cool stuff found from uh, from Allison Pete when we were last talking about garage door openers that we had yet to get to. So I think now is a is as good a time as any. So I'm I'm vamping for you here. Yeah, thank you. Uh, sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so new listener Allison writes in. <laughs> she says, "I'm the one out of ten who isn't going to recommend Moross for fixing the idiotic Chamberlain LiftMaster fiasco with smart control of garage doors. Nothing against Moross. I love their switches, but the sensor for the open closed looked too flimsy and small to make me question the reliability." Also, feedback from listeners on it. Anywho, we chose the Tailwind IQ3 because of its huge magnet sensor combo and how the sensor mounts to the J channel for the rollers of the garage door. Uh, and of course, I wrote it up, and thanks for asking, Allison. And and Pete said, send it to feedback at MackieCab.com. But oh. I'm writing to that. But writing to that address was denied. So Dave, oh, I don't know. Interesting. I guess that that was out, folks. Don't write to only, that anymore. Only for Allison is it yeah. denied? Yeah. She said she was one out of ten. I wrote back and said, "Well, you're two out of ten because listener James also wrote in, and and uh, even though it, 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 I looked like they were sitting next to each other, copying and pasting. Yeah, their were emails were the almost same, almost identical. Yeah, <laughs> it's I, it, it's interesting. I I don't I I know what she's saying. It is a so when you wire in the Moross garage door opener, like I said, it, it's a it's a small little unit, you, you know, maybe yeah. smaller than your iPhone. Right. And and so uh, it has three leads coming off of it. One there are one, three sets of leads, one that goes into your you know garage door opener unit to trigger it, as I mentioned, one that is power. It's actually USB a power, but it comes with its own little brick. Uh, so you can you know manage that the way you want. And then the third lead is the one for a sensor that you put on your uh, garage door so that you know it it knows whether it's open or closed and it is a small little sensor it's 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 basically one of those sensors like you would see on windows and stuff to, to you know like with a with a home oh, alarm for the system. security system or something yeah, yeah. It, yeah it's that kind of a thing but it it's it works really well. I was I just kind of threw it up in in my garage and and didn't really spend a whole lot of time lining it all up the right way and all yeah. that stuff. And it works the the proximity it just needs to be close. It doesn't need to be nudged right up against it like we're used to with the security things in our homes sure. or whatever. This as long as it's close, it just it works flawlessly. 
Um, we haven't, nice. we, I mean, I've probably had it in for six weeks now and it's, it like, I, I haven't thought about it until we started doing this episode. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, well, that's not true. I thought about buying uh, another one for my garage door so that I didn't have to deal with this flaky Chamberlain thing. But then I, I actually u- am using a Maross smart switch to solve the problem of the MyQ garage door opener going offline. So, you know, like, there yeah. you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's cheaper. Um, <laughs> well, in that I had the switch and it wasn't yeah. deployed yeah. anywhere. Right. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. It's cheaper because I had it. <laughs> yeah, as we know, it's always easy to throw money at a problem. Correct, correct. Yeah, and <laughs> and and you know, for like forty bucks, the, those Maras garage door opener things, like it's probably the right decision for me yeah. because that forty dollars would just save the headache, and I'm done. Yeah. However, <laughs> I I'm a nerd. I like to like I do this show. I like to come up with fun little solutions, and so you know, yeah, I'm, I'm inspired. You know, for about four bucks, you could get one of those little metal handles, screw it into the front of the door, and get out and lift it. I don't, I don't understand. What's the fun of that? I know. P- what? <laughs> what? I don't. Getting out of my car, like I don't even want like to have to walk all the way across the living room to change the channel on your TV. You know. I yeah. Get it. Yeah. It, now, what I have Which failed at though yeah. is I wrote a shortcut that would uh, open my garage door when I got close. But your phone has to be unlocked for that shortcut to run. But I got like before I realized that I went way, way down a rabbit hole because I was like, look, I don't want my phone to open. I don't want this shortcut to run unless I'm the one driving. Like if I'm in Lisa's car with her, I don't want my garage door opening just because I'm near the house. Right. 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 And so I uh, wrote a, a secondary shortcut that saves um a, a essentially a, a, a one or a zero to a note that says am i on carplay or not and this that shortcut is triggered by when i connect to carplay and when i disconnect from carplay and so when i connect to carplay it Be rewrites driving. a note and puts a one in there and when i disconnect from carplay it puts a zero in there and then when my other shortcut runs uh, for the proximity of the garage door, which of course doesn't work because my phone's not unlocked, but be that as it may, it reads that note and will only continue if the value is one, not zero. Nerd. I know. Isn't it cool? <laughs> <laughs> However, I, I, and I thought, okay, well, I could probably, uh, you know, people are like, well, y- you know, rewire it so that it, it, you're, so that HomeKit thinks it's not a garage door, but thinks it's a switch. And then you can have it turn on a switch that happens to be a garage door. You know, they were like, do all this and trick it. And I was going to do that. But then I realized you can, first of all, just ask the S later while you're driving with CarPlay to open your garage door. And that's fine. Like it won't do it automatically, but it will do it that way. And then, you know, there's that um, when you're in CarPlay, you can have like the full screen view of your app. Or you can have the half screen view of mm-hmm. your app, right? Where the, you know, like the map is on the left and then on the right, you get like a series of it's widgets. My favorite view. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I don't use that view often, but uh, I believe it was listener Andrew in our Discord hipped me to the fact that that view, as I get close to my house, the very bottom widget changes to be my garage door. And it, goes to the garage door that you most recently opened from that phone. So uh, it, it, so it just shows and I can just tap it on the screen. I don't even have to. And it, it, you know, it, it pops up when I'm, I don't know when I'm in the neighborhood. So it, it, it like, it's the perfect timing. I just tap it and the garage door is open. I, I haven't met, messed with my, um, my automation, which still runs every time. It just fails uh, because it, you know, it can't unlock the phone. So I know I'm nerdy. What can I say? 